In this video, you will learn how to use the tools in Splint Studio to make occlusal splints. When in the Dental Desktop Order form, select the Appliance category and then Splint. Now you'll be able to start the guided splint workflow. In the first step, you need to define the occlusal plane so that the model would be placed correctly in the virtual articulator. Before you do that, you need to select a machine and material combination that you will use to produce the splint. To define the plane, put a set of three points on the model, as per the instructions shown on the screen. It is also possible to use the paint tool to trim away any soft tissue that could interfere with the motions of the virtual articulator. Please remember, this change will become visible in the next step. In the byte configuration step, you can construct a byte. This could either be the target byte or a byte that could accommodate an occlusal splint of a certain thickness. It's important to point out that the software enables you to open the byte to the given splint thickness. You can also select the specific articulated and non-articulated motions before you lock the byte. Press the Select Motions to Perform button and here you'll be able to choose which specific movements you wish to be performed. Lock jaw position and run articulation to check if the chosen byte is correct. When ready, press Next. In the following steps, you define an insertion direction that will allow the splint to be inserted and taken out, while retaining the proper contact between the splint and the tooth surface. You can add both parametric retention and manual sculpted retention, where you want the splint to have extra grip in a given area. For this, you will use the wax trimming tool. Now you are ready to trace the outline of your splint. This is also the step where you define how the general thickness of the splint should be and which offset you want to have between its underside and the tooth surface. Thanks to this, it will be able to slip on and off in spite of the friction between the splint and the teeth. In order to make sure that a given drill size can still mill out the necessary areas, the drill compensation value can be defined. This will allow the splint to be seated correctly. In many occlusal splint types, you'll need to raise areas of the splint towards the antagonizing dentition to ensure the desired function. There are three ways the software can assist users in getting the shape they are aiming for. Raise to antagonist cusp tips. This will make the selected areas of the splint follow the antagonist cusp tips. It minimizes the need for manual sculpting for splints where you aim for this design. Raise to a plane. Here the user defines and adjusts the plane and the selected areas will be raised to this plane. Raise ramp. This will create a slanted area perpendicular to the length of the arch, similar to a turn profile on a racetrack. The angle can also be defined. These three different raise methods can be mixed for the exact desired effect. After a short calculation, the software will present you a transparent preview of the geometry based on the selection you've made. It is important to know that the rounding of a transition from the raised area to the non-raised area can be adjusted along with the other parameters. Now you are ready to adapt the design based on the excursions of the patient's jaw. It's worth knowing that the software will notify you if the resulting splint design is too thin. You can either correct it or accept as it is. Splint Studio software records all the collisions between the splint and the antagonist. And then you can automatically adapt the design by removing those intersections.
you can make manual adjustment to the design to ensure that you have proper contacts and that the splint supports or limits given movements where it is needed. Run articulation and then do iterations between sculpting and running articulation again to see if the correct behaviour has been achieved. In the next step, you are able to add an ID tag on the splint. Press Add New Tag, then edit the text, if you need. It is possible to add additional information to the tag. Select it from the drop-down list, and then press the plus icon next to the text field. You can also select the size of the tag. After that, move the cursor over the splint and press the mouse to place it. Toggle the engraved ID tag button on or off, depending on what type of tag you want. Please remember that the software enables you to add more tags or remove the active one if needed. It's also possible to remove all of them at once. That completes the design part and you're now ready to export and produce using the relevant production equipment. Press Open Folder to see the folder with the output files. If you produce for the first time, the Explorer window will pop up automatically. Then press Browse to select a folder for the output files. We hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.